Hey, how's it going? I'm going to show you how to set up a scrollable menu that you can use in your games. So like the statistics menu I have over here, uh, it's nicely masked, scrollable. And if I look over here in my hierarchy, I just expanded this here. If I was to duplicate this stats section, you're going to see that it just completely creates new entries and I can just create as many of them as I want. And the menu resizes accordingly and appropriately. Pretty cool, very useful. Let's see how we can create something like this from scratch. Okay, so I've gone ahead here and set up an empty Unity project. And inside of it, I'm going to right click on the hierarchy, go to UI and make a new canvas. That's going to also create an event system, which we need for any UI work. I'll zoom out to see the whole canvas. And then I'll also change it to canvas scalar to scale with screen size and set a reference resolution of 1920 by 1080. I'm also using a display aspect ratio of 16.9. Uh, Under the canvas, we are now going to create a new UI image, and we'll just rename this to be panel. I'll click on our rec transform, the, uh, the pivoting anchor presets icon. I'll hold alt and I'll make it scale to the entire screen size. Uh, and then I'll give it some padding of 500 on the left and right and 200 on the top and bottoms. There we go. That looks like a decent size. Now I'll right click again on the panel, go to UI, create a new image, and we'll call this one scroll rect. In here, uh, I will actually on this first panel, I'm going to change the color first so we can see the difference. So there's our background panel, and this is going to be our scroll rect. I'll also hold alt and resize it to take up the full uh, size. And then I'll just give it padding of 100 on each direction. So it's a bit of a contained area. And then I'm going to right click on the scroll rect one more time, go to uh, create another UI image. And I'm going to make this one hold alt and make this one take up the entire size. I uh, just for good measure, I'll also give it a different color so we can tell what's happening. So we have our black background panel, the scroll rect object itself here, which is this white area, and then the image underneath, which I'm also going to rename to content. And this is where we're actually going to put our scrollable items underneath this one. Very important to make sure the content is the takes up the full size of the scroll rect. Scroll rect can be whatever size you want. On the scroll rect, we are going to go to add component and add a scroll rect object. And it's going to ask us for some stuff. Under content, we're going to drag in the content. Under viewport, we are going to drag in the scroll rect. And then I'm going to uncheck horizontal because we want this scroll rect to go vertically. We want it to go up and down. Uh, we are also going to add a mask object onto the uh, scroll rect itself. And if you're not really going to be able to tell what this is doing with the show mask graphic or not, but if I disable this content object, we can see there's the white image. And then if I just disable this, we're not going to see that white image anymore. Uh, which is basically what we want. We want to know this white area is where we'll be able to scroll, but we don't actually want to see the white area. So I'm just going to leave that unchecked and we'll leave the content uh, object turned on. And then it doesn't, we can make this invisible if we want to just by like changing the alpha. Uh, I'll leave it on though, just so we can see that this is our scrollable area. Next, I'm going to right click on the content, go to UI and create a new text mesh pro object and we'll rename this to content item. And I'm gonna duplicate this a few times. And you're gonna see that they just appear over top of each other, of course. So on the content, next I'm going to go to add component and add a vertical layout group. And that's going to automatically start uh, aligning those for us in the upper left. You can change those to appear in the upper center or any other orientation. Uh, and you might be tempted to also go on them and just manually resize them, but we don't want to do that. We want to let the vertical layout group do the heavy lifting for us. So on here, I'm going to check control child size width, and that's going to make each of these be forced to take, uh, take up the entire width of the area. Uh, you also notice that right now they are being stretched out to take up the entire height of this uh, content container. I'm going to disable child force expand, and that's just going to make the items align themselves one after another like this. Now, if we want, I could also give them some spacing by spacing these guys out. And you're going to see if they go off, uh, the mask is already working because they just disappear right underneath and you can no longer see them. 
Uh, let's just hit play to see how that actually looks in the game and how that would work right now if we were to just leave it like this. Okay, so here we go. You can see like, uh, you know, it kind of gives what we're looking for, but also not really. So there's a few more steps we need to do. On the content object, the next thing we're going to do is add a new component, and this one is going to be called a content size fitter. And we're going to change the vertical fit here to preferred size. And immediately you're going to notice that there's this green box that has uh, just appeared here. And what this is basically doing is it's forcing the content area to take up the entire size of our content items. So if I was to duplicate this a few more times, you're going to see that this is going to get bigger. And on the other side, if I was to disable it, it's going to get smaller. So we also kind of need to make sure that we have a bit of a minimum size here. Um, and also one thing we need to do is you're going to notice that in the content area right now, we have the Y position set to zero, which is what we want. But if we were to start it, it means that our game would be starting in the middle of the scroll rect. So I need to change the anchors Y pivot to one and then reset the Y position to zero. And this makes sure that our uh, content scrollable area is starting at the very top. So let's give that another try and see how that looks. Okay, here we go. And beautiful, it's taking up the entire uh, length of that area. And you can also see the it doesn't look great with the pink background. So you probably don't want to uh, actually have that uh, background showing up here. So I'm just gonna disable the alpha. And now if I was to do this, actually it looks perfectly fine. Uh, you have that a bit of elasticity uh, and it, it just looks really good there. So I'm going to disable the spacing on here and uh, also show you how you can just add some manual spacing if you wanted to. Uh, like say you had an area on here and you had like a header item and then you had some, and then you had this bolded and underlined and now you have some content and then you want to have another uh, header item with some content underneath, but you want some spacing. So let me just duplicate this one, move it down to the bottom. I, uh, you know, looks okay, but we probably want some spacing underneath there. Uh, so what we can do, just a little trick. Let me just check. I think this is number five. Yeah, number five. I'm gonna duplicate number four, rename this to just like a couple of dotted lines, and we'll just delete the words content item. And there you go. Now we've created some spacing in between. Um, if I wanted to kind of expand that and make it more, I could also add to it a uh, layout element and then give it a minimum height and uh, just increase the minimum height. Uh, we do need to make sure control child size height is enabled here. Uh, and if we have that option and checked, then we can just adjust the minimum height uh, value here. And we can see that we can automatically control our spacing that way. So that is an, another way just to add some variable space into here and have some header items uh, with different displays. And again, if I was to just really create something crazy, we're gonna see that it still scrolls and resizes itself perfectly fine. So that's how we can create a scrollable vertical layout group area with masking, uh, very helpful for creating different menu items. Thanks for watching.